Hello, welcome to the episode number 8 of Implementing Exceptions with Ruby. My name is Hernan Wilkinson, I work at Tempines, and remember that we are implementing a new model of exceptions in the language, in the Ruby language, using only objects and messages. On the last episode, we did some refactorings to our design, we renamed some objects, implemented some patterns, and we finally put good names to the tests. We had some to-dos, like this one, these two to-dos, but today on this episode we are going to implement some new features that most uh, exception, ha exception models don't have in the current programming languages. For example, one of the things that I don't like about current program uh, exception models in the languages that we have is that every time you want to handle an exception you have to, you have to define the type of the exceptions that you want to handle and that's a and you have to pass a class there you cannot pass something that uh, could help you to decide which type of class of exception you want to handle and I think it's too restrictive I, I would like to send there something that could allow me to, def to define in a more broader way which type of exceptions I want to handle for example, I would like to do something like that. Let's write our first test. And remember, we are not worrying about the names again. And I would like to write something like this. I have an ex uh, a block where I throw an exception. They say new exceptions class. And I want to handle all the new exceptions but new exceptions to class. So I want to handle all the exceptions that are in, uh, of the type new exception or if suit classes, but I don't want to handle an exception of type new exception to class. <clears throat> if we want to do this with the current implementation, we have to write something like that, something like this. I have uh, I ha I send a message called handling with new exception as a parameter and in the handler I have to put an if where by hand I have to see if an exception class equals new exception sub class and if so then I have to for example throw the exception again or pass it to the next handler something like this and if not then I handle the exception. But you know this is something that is not nice because I have to write the if, I have to write this all the time and I think it's a uh, it's nicer to have the possibility to define something like we wrote at the beginning. So that's a new feature that we are going to implement and to do it we have to write the test first. So what we want to do is we want to throw an exception of type new exceptions to class but we don't want to handle exceptions of type and we want to handle exception of type new exception but we're going to put here another type of exception another new exception subclass because we want this test to be the simplest one and we want this test to to pass to have a positive to be positive, yes? So, in the handler, let's write the parameter in the next line. What we want to do is to return something that says that the handler was evaluated. So, let's return hand, handler evaluated. Uh, yeah, let's return true and assign that. Sorry, it's not. Uh, there you go and assign that to handler evaluated it is a better name that we sold and let's assert that the handler was evaluated okay so we throw an exception of type new exception to class but we don't want to handle we want to handle only exceptions of type new exception but 
not of another exception subclass and if the handler is evaluated will return true. So let's see what happens. Well we have a problem because we haven't defined another exception subclass. Let's do it. Let's create a class another exception subclass as a subclass of new exception. And let's see what happens. Okay, now it's not working because but is not implemented. So we have to think on the easiest implementation of the message but in the class new exception. So let's go to new exception and let's think about what's the easiest implementation for that message. The self but that receives a subclass. So, and, and we want this to return an, an object, for example, a class, that will return true in this case when we see if the uh, handler has to handle the exception. So, in this case, it is enough to have an implementation here that returns self. Let's see if everything works, and yes, it is working. So we have our first test that is verifying that at least a case of our new features is working. Now we have to think about the following test and remember again uh, what we are going to do now is the opposite of the first one of the previous test. So now we want to throw new exception subclass and we want to handle new exception but new exception subclass and if the handler is evaluated we have to return false or we have to send the message flank let's do a flank and we want to um, to be sure that it's going to be handled by another handler so let's create another lambda that is going to let's let's do this a little bit different lambda okay so we want this like that and we want now call handling and here yes we want to handle new exception subclass to an exception and we want to return true in this case. Okay, so now handler evaluated will be true if and only if this handler is evaluated. If this one is evaluated, the test will fail. We could put here false, it's the same thing. So let's see what happens. The test is failing because we are getting false. So this handler is being evaluated and that's correct because right now the implementation of the message but is very simple, it's the easiest that made the test number one pass. But now we have to think in the right implementation to make the second test pass. So we want to return an object here that will allow us from the uh, exception handler return true in some cases and false in another cases. But right now, the should handle method is implemented asking the exception if it is kind of an exception to handle class. So this uh, implementation doesn't allow us to, you know, take another decision about when to handle or not an exception. It is like hard coded that it has to return, it has to uh, answer the message kind of. So. If we change this and make the exception to handle class take the responsibility of deciding if an exception has to handle, uh, then we will be able to uh, change the behavior on the exception to handle class to decide when an exception has to be handled or not. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to tell the exception to handle class it handles an exception.
Of course, if we run the test, all the tests will fail because handles is not implementing on new exception uh, and new exception. So let's do that. Let's go to new exception and let's implement the message handles. That is a message that has to be implemented on the class that receives an exception. And right now, the implementation for it is going to be an exception kind of cell. So the implementation is the same as before, but now the responsibility of deciding if an exception has to be handled is not hard coded in the exception handler, but is now the responsibility of another object that answers the, the message handles. In this case, the exception. But, uh, you know, it's not necessary always to pass an exception class to an exception handler. If we send, if we pass to the exception handler an object that answers the message handles, then everything is going to work fine. So that's what we're going to do with the bat. The bat is going to return an object that is going to be polymorphic with the message handles, but it's not going to be a class. It's going to be something of, for example, um, exception hierarchy filter that is going to be created with self and a subclass. And instances of this class will answer the message handle. So let's define the class exception hierarchy filter and let's define the initialize method that is going to receive a hierarchy root and a class to a subclass to filter and let's keep those on instance variables hierarchy root and subclass to filter okay and now we have to define the message handles that receives an exception okay so what is the handles going to do on the hierarchy exception hierarchy filter well what we want to do here is that if an exception if the type of an exception is of subclass to filter then we don't want to handle the, the we don't want the handler to handle the exception if not if it is not of that type we will ask the hierarchy root to see if it has to handle it so let's do that so an exception let's say that we're going to ask just for the class if it is equals to subclass to filter if this is true then we want to return false and if not what we want to do is to ask hierarchy root if it has to handle it has to handle an exception okay so let's see if it is working and yes it is working so right now we are able to write an exception handler where the type of exceptions that we want to uh, handle is not defined only by the type of the exception that we are throwing but by an object that answer the message handles and so we can put there any kind of object that is polymorphic with that message again this is a ruby is a dynamically typed language so we can leave our implementation like this or we can create a type for objects to answer the message handles and do the same thing as we did with the hierarchy uh, with the exception handlers but let's not do it right now because it's going to take us some time and it's, it's not going to add new value.
to this set of videos. So, but what I want to do is to make this new feature a little bit more uh, abstract or to be more um, open because, okay, now we can pass here any object that answers the message handle, uh, handles, but why not passing a, a condition to be sure if an, a handle has to be evaluated? So let's do that. Let's make this a little bit uh, more generic and let's pass a condition in, in this message, in the call handling, in such a way that we can write a, you know, a Boolean expression to define if a handler has to be evaluated or not. So let's do that. Let's write a new test. Test number three, and we want to have here. Uh, we are throwing, for, exa uh, for example, new exception, and we want to evaluate the block handling. And we're going to create a new message handling when, and here we're going to pass a lambda that is going to receive an exception. And this is getting difficult to read, so let's here and if an exception meets some condition for example let's say an exception description equals um, some description then we want we want our handle to be evaluated yes Okay, so we're going to throw new exception, but we're going to pass some description as a description of the new exception. And we're going to assert that the handler was evaluated. Remember that if no handler is found, then uh, the default exception, uh, the default uh, handler not found strategy is going to be uh, evaluated and in this case is going to exit. The system. Well, the problem we are having now is that call handling when is not implemented. Let's do it. And what is going to get here is going to get a condition and a handler. And what's the easiest implementation that we can write here right now to make this method work? Well, let's copy this. And let's say that instead of passing an exception class, let's pass the class that we are using right now for the for the test. You know, this this will make the test pass, but of course this is not the definite implementation. Okay, we are having a problem here, and that's because throw now receives a description as a parameter. That let's initialize that as an empty string. So when we create the new object, let's pass the description and then send the message throw to that new exception. Let's define the message, the method initialize that gets a description that is going to set that in an instance variable okay let's see how everything is working and yeah it's working fine so our first test with this new feature is working and that's because we wanted that we wanted the exception handler to uh, to be evaluated but again we have to think now in the next next test and we're going to follow the same strategy as we did with the previous one. We want, we are going to write the negative of, or the opposite case for, for the next test. And so in this case we want to throw an exception, new exception with some description, but we don't want this handler to be evaluated. So if we're going to handle only if the description is something like XXX, 
and if the handler is evaluated we want to return false and then we want to have a nested hand handler <coughs> that sorry that in this case we want the condition to be uh, an exception description equals some description we should uh, you know extract these strings and put them in in variables or constants but I'm not going to do it right now it's not going to add value to the video but remember that you should avoid to have hard-coded values or objects we all know that so now if the hundred is evaluated we want to return to okay so now we have the uh, opposite test of the previous one and now let's see if it work if it, it doesn't work because uh, it's returning false and that's of course is because it's evaluating the first handler so now we have to change the implementation of call handling when if you think a little bit call handling is a special case of call handling when where the uh, condition that we use for the call handling right now is sending the message handles to the class so and a change that we can make here is to the call handling to send the message call handling when and to remove the implementation of should handle that is this one right now to be exactly this so that is what we're going to do let's use the, let's implement here call handling sending the message call handling when that is going to let's define the condition it's a lambda that receives an exception and that is going to an exception is going to ask to an exception class handles an exception so now we're going to send the message call handling when passing the condition sorry sending self first uh, no sorry the condition and the handler and now instead of sending new uh, an exception class here to the install new handler we're going to pass a condition so what we did now is we defined that call handling when is a more abstract implementation of the call handling that is why call handling is reusing it so now we have to change call uh, install new handler we're evaluating that is not going to receive an exception class but a condition so it creates a new instance of define exception handler handler passing that condition let's change the uh, initialize that is going to receive a condition so now let's uh, exception to handle class let's rename it to be condition oops sorry this is wrong this one condition and it's going to be initialized with a condition and now let's see where we were using condition we were using that on the should handle and right now the the new implementation is going to be call the condition passing an exception as a parameter let's see if it work if it works it is not working let's see why um wrong number of arguments where is that um i think we have to pass the handler like this and yes now test 3 and 4 are failing because we haven't implemented the message description on 
new exception so let's do that let's go to new exception and define the method description that is going to return the variable description the object referenced by the variable description let's run the test and now all the tests run okay so what we did on this last two tests is to be able to pass a condition in the message called handling when and that condition could do could be anything and that condition is the one that is used to define to decide sorry if a handler if an exception handler has to be evaluated or not so I, I think these are nice features now that we have uh, the possibility to uh, pass a condition here we could also change our implementation of the message but to return just the lambda that we want to what that we want to be the condition but that's something that I will leave to you as a as a enhancement so what what we did today we from the design point of view we created new interesting features that most programming language do not support and they don't support it because the exception implementation is closed you cannot change it you cannot see it you cannot modify it we have now an open implementation of the exception model and therefore we can change it we can modify it we can do whatever we need to do with it to feel us uh, more comfortable uh, we started with a practical example using the message but and we end up with a more gener general solution more generic solution that's very common it's and it's a good practice to start with practical ideas with concrete ideas and then try to make more generic ones from there and again we use blocks to parameterize code like the condition remember that uh, blocks are objects that whose main uh, responsibility is to represent code and from the TDD point of view we implemented the simplest and positive test first and we wrote the simplest implementation in the model to make the test pass and then we wrote the negative or the opposite test to make that implementation um, more complex or difficult and that's the way you usually do TDD you start with something simple and then you make it more complex step by step um, okay so I hope you enjoyed this episode and let's, I hope to see you also on the next one